understanding the downfall of South Africa as the 30th oh, wow. anniversary of the end of apartheid is this year. I don't know if you were born into the previous system or you grew up during the the change between the, the two, but uh, to, to ask a question, uh, let's compare South Africa 1990 to 2024, which is oh, the better Jesus year. Christ. <laughs> 1990. I was a year old. Oh, oh, right. I was so born in eighty nine. Yeah. Ah, right, right. So you literally yeah. grew Came up at the tail end of the regime. Yeah. Grew up at the tail end of the regime. Yeah. Young boy or a teenager during uh, the early two thousands, mid two thousands. Oh, yeah. my mathematics are going to hell. Yeah. So you I literally... left South Africa in two thousand one. Mm-hmm. Ah. I don't blame you. When I'm, uh, yeah. But uh, do, do you remember that period of your life or have you suppressed it like the plague? Uh, no, I actually have fond memories of back home. I, I mm-hmm. don't really have memories of, of crime or racism or any of this kind of shit. Um, I did have, it's, it's kind of weird, um, despite the fact that I haven't been there in 2009. Wow, I haven't been home in 14 fucking years. Jesus Christ, that's horrifying. Um, blame you. Yeah, it's it's that's my parents want me to go back actually, and I just said to them, You're "Still no, there?" I, uh, no, they, they go on holiday every year, oh, and they always want oh. me to go. And I, I said to my mom, "Like, I have no reason to go back home." Yeah. And people say, like, "Oh, your family." I'm like, "My family never contact me." Like, I know that sounds really harsh, <laughs> but mm-hmm. it's like. Like, if anybody will miss you, I'm like, they contact me once a second year, and that's when you're there. So I don't really buy that. No offense to my family, but that's kind of how I see they don't it. Want, they don't want to give away their position, Spoon. Yeah, probably not at this point. Um, mm. But everyone back home seems to be all right. I mean, you know, my family tends to be on the, at least one side of the family is, is fairly wealthy. So they basically have their own electrical power and mm-hmm. they're in a beach house and they're, they're, they're surrounded by basically white people. So they're, Pretty much safe from harm. Uh, you hear all sorts of horror stories about South Africa, especially in in recent years. Talk about a failed state, ladies and gentlemen. Oh yeah, I have a feeling that might have something to do with the gold supply. Oh, oh. yeah, well, because uh, South Africa in the eighteen hundreds or the late eighteen hundreds saw an astronomical amount of investment mm-hmm. because um, there was gold found. A absurdly large amount of it. And if you run a currency on the world currency based on gold, yeah, you might want to get control of that. Otherwise, that country could literally fuck you into oblivion by just the amount of gold it can produce. Um, Cecil Rhodes, gold and diamonds, that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. I know yeah, a little bit about that uh, period of history. Ball yeah, war and if, all that. If you look at South Africa... Um, Prior to the 1970s, something like mm-hmm. two thirds of the world's gold came from South Africa. Jesus! And like, yeah, and like 50 percent of all the gold that's been that's ever been mined on Earth came from one area in South Africa called Witwatersrand. So there is an astronomical amount of wealth in South Africa if you went by gold standards. Like, Jesus fucking Christ. Like, if you had an independent government to run in that shit, like, by all means, South Africa has the capacity to be a world superpower. Like, I asked mm-hmm. a friend of mine about that, and he went, the Dutch have the capacity to be a world superpower if they ran the place. Absolutely. I'm like, okay, wow, okay. <laughs> like, can I go back there and make that happen? I would not mind being a world superpower. I feel like my <laughs> country would be a lot more base about it than the fucking Yanks. Because I, because I always remember the two nations that were the most usually the most peaceful and the most prosperous, despite terrorism. Let's just call it what it is. It was terrorism and international sanctions. Was Rhodesia and South Africa, despite the fact yeah. that most of the world was was against them, um, for yeah. obvious reasons. And they were the two shining stars. Of the African continent, and yes, this was during the Cold War period as well. A lot of violence, a lot yeah. of trouble. Hmm. Yeah, and it, it's because they were run by Europeans. And like, oh, like, oh, you're not supposed to say that. Like, fuck you. You destroyed my country. I'll say whatever the fuck I want. You assholes. Well, a thing that really um, 
sparked me up in regards to the whole conversation is that beavers and termites can make better buildings than sub-Saharan Africans, folks. This is not actually a joke. Uh, the biggest Yeah, that's building, actually quite literal. Yeah, the biggest buildings in sub-Saharan Africa before the arrival of European peoples was the termite mounds that would be a few meters high. These are very impressive structures. And then I, I said to myself, should we give termites human rights? And I don't know if they have beavers in Africa, but uh, beavers are capable of building impressive structures as well, uh, far more impressive than the sub-Saharan African. And then I thought to myself, should we give beavers human rights? And, uh, of course, we can link this to Australia as well. There are no natives in Australia, folks. The people known as the Aboriginals were actually Polynesians who conquered the land. Barren land, it's amazing. They didn't get beaten by kangaroos and emus. But uh, in any case, uh, Spoon, uh, I personally believe that South Africa is a basket case. It is a joke. And it could get yeah, a lot really worse for the country, especially if the economic freedom fighters get their way. Yeah, they will never see power. <clears throat> so I'm not too worried about them. Fingers crossed, Spoon, you know. Yeah, it, yeah it's 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 because they're, they're, they're too stupid to hold power. Okay, so um, people have been asking me, well, uh, one of the guys that did the, uh, the Brokenomics thing mm -hmm. on, um, on the Lotus Eaters, he, he messaged me and he asked me about it. Um, what is the the actual opinion of the EFF? And I said to him, like, Julius Malema is not a serious actor. I said to him, in my opinion, the man is an absolute fucking clown. If you listen to him talk, he he talks a lot about you know you know kill the boot all this dumb shit. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you do not have the spine to do jack fucking shit. You're a mm -hmm. giant pussy. You are an absolute fucking bitch who wouldn't do shit. You just say shit to basically get money. He's he's basically that. He's a clown. Um, he just sounds incredibly dangerous, but I don't from, think he has it in him to actually do anything. From what I remember, Julius Malemba got kicked out of the ANC for being too much of a loudmouth and too much of a, yeah. of a radical. And then he started yeah. off the economic freedom fighters. I think this was back in 2014. But as yeah. far as I remember, they're the third biggest political party in South Africa. Of course, you've got the ANC. Yeah. And then you've got the the moderate, say moderate force. Yeah. I think they're they're basically yeah. not lunatics, uh, no. not complete lunatics. And then you've got the economic freedom fighters, and then all the uh, minor political groups. Yeah. But uh, yeah, South freedom Africa fighters who wants to nationalize absolutely fucking everything. Like yeah, mm. <laughs> we're going to consolidate all fucking power to the state, but we're totally going to be freedom fighters. Like who the fucking mm. hell do you think you're kidding, you dumbass? Who the fuck is going to... Okay, never mind. I'm not going to ask who's going to buy that. And shit, little people will. Well, not Zimbabwe. exactly a, a bright people. Oh, my fucking God. Don't Zimbabwe even get bought Zimbabwe. it. Yeah. <laughs> For decades. But... Uh, yeah. yeah. That's... Okay, pattern recognition. Like, if you want to know, like, why do I have the opinions that I do? That's the kind of shit that I see. Is I see that Ooh. kind of stuff and go, you really want me to believe these fucking people can run anything new? They are absolute fucking troglodytes. Hey, hey they can run something, Spoon, Into to the, the ground. ground yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and people say like, oh, you're prejudicial. Like, you're damn fucking right, I'm prejudicial. I like mm -hmm. having a regime that functions. That's that's kind of how my prejudice works. <laughs> and I'm not well, going to change it. You can fuck off. Well, it's great to see third for the second. I hope you're doing well, my good man. Sargon is a very busy man. Carl is a family yeah. man. He's also a business owner. Plus, I don't know him. And as I said before, it's not what you know, it's who you know. So if you can arrange that third as a third party, that would be fantastic. But uh, until that happens, oh well, move on. I would so actually to like to get some of, uh, some of his crew on our channel, actually. I've actually been talking to a few of them. Well, that's good. You see mm. these kinds of connections, folks. I wouldn't have gotten to know Spoon without Nerd Wars, and 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 Spoon. He has uh, fine talks with with fellow creators, far more professional than I am. It, it's these kinds of connections that bring us all together, break down the barriers, uh, unplug people from the regime propaganda. And there are layers of this propaganda, folks. It's like an onion. Think of the Trek film, Onions Have Layers. Yeah. 
that sort of thing. Uh, the red pill. I will, I, and, and I will say on. for me, it is very, very weird um, mm -hmm. talking to people because uh, I came late in the game and I've been watching some of the people I, I speak to now for years. So it is kind of strange to having watched them now hearing some of them call me friend. I'm like, mm. I don't know how to feel about this. This is really weird. It's kind of strange to me. Mm. Um, I, I, quite frankly, I'm amazed anyone ha has gone through the past 10 years as a content creator and come out of it sane because most people haven't. Mo most fellow creators who started off, you know, in the Gamergate days, most of them have lost their fucking minds. Yeah, exactly. It, 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 folks like yeah. Sargon, Carl, uh, Benjamin are the exception, not the rule. I can, I, 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 have a, I can maybe take a guess for that. Mm -hmm. I think it's because a bunch of people, because Gamergate was in most ways actually political. It just happened to hit a cultural tide. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, so here's a good example. Do you remember when, when um, as did the whole pronoun rant thing? Yes, yes. Yes. That was a good indication of who had actual political acumen and who were just fucking twats. And um, you could see people like Chris Reagan and oh, Axeman were oh, just God. fucking lemmings. Absolutely. Oh. No political acumen whatsoever. Um, man, a man <clears throat> who, who was a victim of cancel culture, now joining a dogpiled cancel as. I mean, the irony... Oh, don't yeah. get me started on Chris Reagan, another fucker who's bleeding out support. He's lost 41,000 subscribers in the past two and a half years. That just goes to show how much support he's lost. 8% of his all... audience. I've also mm. noticed these people are unbelievably fucking smug. Mm. And have Arrogant. no fucking reason to be. While they bleed audience members, like, how are you this fucking cocky and you're also losing subs? Like, what the fuck? You have less views, less of an audience, but you're more arrogant. Like, hmm. what the fuck? This makes no sense to me whatsoever. Hmm. That's um, why. I tr that's why I try to be uh, humble because I know <clears throat> that if I can do this, most folks can do it. I, I have a budget of zero, folks. These are my twin towers of of physical media. No, they will never fall. And uh, yeah, this is this is my television, and you know the lights and and the laptop screen create a nice little face so yeah it's it's yeah. it's the small things but the point is folks it reminds me of be... johnny's plank from ed ed and eddie well why now that I see it, i'm like i can't unsee it <laughs> i keep looking at it now the point is ladies and gentlemen don't be an mm. arrogant prick as a content creator you have unless you can pull it off humble. yeah that well i can never pull it off so that's why i just say stay humble because I can I, somewhat I think... pull it off, but I, I I need to actually be very confident in what I'm saying. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I, um, I don't like people who are smug for no fucking reason. That mm -hmm. like as someone who gets accused of being conceited all the time, I I it genuinely pisses me off when people are arrogant, <clears throat> and you can tell just like with really cursory glances that no, mm -hmm. you're just full of shit. That really does piss me off. Like when I try at least be consistent, like no one has ever said to me, Spoon, how did you get to this? You're pulling this out of your ass. Like, no. Okay, except well, for one video oh. um, that happened. Yes. But um I had I had a lot of defenders. Um it was the <clears throat> it was a video where Sargon had to go at James Lindsay. Oh yeah. Because Sargon said um liberalism leads to communism. And uh James Lindsay lost his fucking marbles over that. Um <laughs> And I thought the it, it was kind of weird to me because it was a very simple explanation. Like people tend to get very fancy about it. And I'm like, no, no, no. It's actually a lot easier than this. Communists hate hierarchies. Liberalism mm. creates a hierarchy. Because if you give people free choice to do whatever the hell they want, and you focus the world based on materialism, the people who can make the best product tend to rise in the hierarchy. That that's generally how the wealth generation goes. And they get pissed off at the hierarchy, and the hierarchy is based on who has fucking money, and then they just topple this order. So they're basically just termites that go like, we don't like the regime, and fuck off. Hence why you can get it in any regime. And those like, that's how you get communism in a liberal regime. It's because they basically hide a hierarchy, and they will just topple any power structure that they don't like. because they Like think an infestation. Yeah, pretty much. Hmm. And so that was, uh, that was my justification. And I read... I read extracts that 
uh, James Linty's co-author did. And I read this woman's work and went, holy shit, this woman is so stupid as fuck. I just read it. I just read the, a book extract on one of the pages. And I didn't tell people what it means because I just thought, this is so fucking obvious. I don't need to explain it. And mm -hmm. a bunch of people in the comment section were just like, you didn't even say anything. You just read it. And I'm like, yeah, because I expect you to not be a fucking nitwit, you dumbass. I expect you to actually understand this. And uh, I basically, I didn't say that, but people in the comment mm -hmm. section... And when they said, uh, what does this mean? And <laughs> someone just wrote like, yeah, he's expecting us not to be a nitwit. And we can clearly mm. see who actually has brains and who doesn't. Like, okay, there we go. Some of my audience actually understand. And I basically, in that particular video, I went through all the comments and went, see, like, here's the people in my audience that have brains. Because I usually mm. bash people. So like, oh, I'll be nice. I'll, I'll flex the people that have some brains. Well, I usually so, yeah. try to explain as much as possible so that I can understand it, first of all, uh, and, and hopefully everyone else can as well. Yeah. I think the best way of of uh, defending your argument, first of all, don't make it. Because uh, I know not <laughs> everyone can take the stealthy approach, but that's usually what I do. You know, whenever there's yeah, a controversy, yeah, you sit back, relax, see what everyone's saying, take some notes. Uh, chime in when necessary and then try to formulate an opinion because i'm not a opinion, i'm yeah. not a smart individual folks i mean i've taken so much sugar over the past few years i literally feel my brain rotting oh if that brain bug got into me it'd be like where's the brain why can't i suck out his brain it's it's sugar we like the brain uh, select from freaking family guy <laughs> well may maybe but uh, I, I will say, Spoon, I'm not breaking the nose off of that brain bug. Ah, uh, yes, no. I mean, I would, but for different reasons. Uh, <laughs> oh. I feel like people do not understand that joke if they are not familiar with the the um, exactly. the reference. Hmm. And, and that's the, the reference. <laughs> well, mm, you don't know. They could be watching. But uh, in all sharp folks will understand the reference. That's exactly the point you were making, Spoon. Sharp yeah, people much. will will understand. And I think what I've gained in courage to speak my mind, I've lost in intelligence, which rather defeats the point of of being a content creator. The point is, though, folks, South Africa is such a shithole that we've steered away <laughs> from it because, well, it's a shithole. I just look at it. Yes, but. Um, 2.3. It's, it's, it's a shame oh, because on. there is a lot of good there. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Africa as a continent is probably has the most potential of any of the continents on planet Earth. Yes. The problem isn't the resources or, or the, the geography. Yes. Yeah, it's the management and, quite frankly, the fucking people. Uh, so 2.3, ladies. I, I did say this. Um, mm -hmm. If South Africa was ever under white rule, I would move back home tomorrow. Hmm. I probably no move problem. there. Climate's probably yeah. better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, that's that's the main thing people like about like I. There are so many people who go overseas because you know mm -hmm. it's safer and all that stuff. But there is just something about home that pulls you back, even despite all this fucked up nature. It's just like the food, the weather, the people. The, yeah, mm. it's a bit strange for people to actually understand. They're like, yeah, but that's just where home is. Like, you get off the plane, you look at the mountains, you're like, yeah, I'm supposed to die here. Which is a weird well, thing to say, but yeah. Well, I'll tell you this, Spoon. Hopefully, uh, time travel is developed within your lifetime. That way, you can go back. I can and go fix back it. in the eighties. <laughs> go back and fix it. Warn everyone. Uh, bring them like a twenty-first yeah. century history book, not a yeah. not a cucked one though. But, Do you uh, have a prisoner called Nelson Mandela? Uh... <laughs> so, so uh, why do so you have a gun? Um, I'll, ex I'll explain in five years. When the regime doesn't fall apart. Uh. 